Hello and welcome. My name is Claude Taylor. For those of you that know me already, welcome back. Those that don't, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you. Okay, what you see me doing here is I was just about to, uh, I was going to discontinue, I mean disconnect this uh, ground to this pipe. Uh, but uh, after strongly thinking about it, the electricity to this house is still on. So I just think I need to leave that right where it is for now. And go ahead and work around it. But anyway, right at the top left hand corner you can see the pipe going out through the wall that's going to the uh, outside faucet and the three below which is two three quarter inch pipes and a half inch uh, one of those three quarter inch is the main coming into the house where we're gonna put a new ball valve on it so that they will have a cutoff here and the other two will go and service the other parts of the house the uh, two bathrooms in the back, the hot water heater, etc. Okay, we worked around the uh, ground and we've got that piece cutting off. You can see what it looks like before we go ahead and change it out. Had a few galvanized pieces in here. And this was the outside faucet. We're going to go around. I'm going to show you where that's uh, coming out at. all places right here in the back of these bushes right here okay that's the old one we're gonna pull that out and we're gonna put a new one in there and it will be copper back inside now let's get should always have at least two uh, main shutoffs to the house. The one outside that uh, everyone always sees out the uh, curb and there should be one inside or just right outside the uh, building foundation to where you can cut it off to the whole entire house. This particular home didn't have a secondary cutoff so what I'm going to do with this uh, manifold here is I'm going to find out which one is the main line uh, coming into the house and I'm pretty sure the one to the far left is it yeah there we go we turned the water on I went out there to turn it on and my daughter's inside videotaping and uh, another thing that gives it away that that is the uh, main is that the uh, ground electrical ground wire is uh, grounded to it so what we're gonna do is I am going to put a shutoff valve here this is the garage part and there's going to be a main shutoff so that uh, when we do, you know, do the work that we need to do in here, we don't have to keep running back out, uh, back and forth from the uh, street to here, uh, kind of wearing ourselves out. Okay, so my biggest trick is to get some of this water out and get that um, paint off of the uh, covering so that we can uh, go ahead and solder a valve in and redo this uh this whole manifold here and do it correctly and again all this these pipes are looped up under the cement which is um, something that's been outlawed since um, so it's always hard trying to clean paint off of uh, pipes And I'm not going to bore you with uh, cleaning these pipes up. Um, just give you a little small idea of what I'm going through to clean it up. And then we'll move on. And uh, what I'm using here is a little scraper. Trying to scrape some of this paint off. Get as much off as I can before I, I can uh, get in here and use the uh, emery cloth like I'm doing here. <laughs> so this process is going to go on. Until I do all. All right, we're gonna do. Actually, we're gonna do just this one right now. I'm gonna get to the others 
later but what I, uh, my plan is to go ahead and take care of this and put the valve on now and turn the water back on to the uh, house coming into the house and then we'll start working on the other ones let's get the uh, we're gonna get the valve on here first and that'll give us something to work with and then once we're done we don't have to run back out to the street anymore uh, all our testing and turning the water on be right right here and what I'm going to use for a cutoff valve is a ball valve quick shutting off ball valve now we've got that cleaned up pretty good we're going to uh, go ahead and clean the ball valve this is a uh, three-quarter inch ball valve sweat uh, that's what you would call it if you go to the store to purchase one one thing about the uh, ball valve when you do go to solder it it's not like other valves that you can take apart to make sure that you don't uh, overheat the uh, inserts uh, so you just have to be really careful uh, when you're going to solder a uh, ball valve and keep the flames away from the center of the uh, ball valve itself and aim it outwards And of course that's the old manifold in the back there. We're going to kind of uh, duplicate that in a way, but we're going to make it a lot much better than what it was before. Just uh, in the uh, manner that I'm soldering the connection, I'm doing my best to keep the uh, flames away from the uh, middle part of the uh, ball valve itself. It's not that easy. Actually, uh, with this big tip, um, I've got a settling that I use, and the tip's a little smaller. It makes it a little easier that you don't apply so much fire to it but uh, we're gonna be okay here I've done this thousands of times uh, but for you beginners out there I just say uh, be real careful what you're doing practice Especially when I'm doing renovation or uh, rehabs or anything like that because of stuff like this. I'm trying to uh, clean up the pipes. The old pipes really good so that uh, it will take really good. And while uh, I'm doing this, this is uh, giving me a chance to allow the uh, ball valve to cool down before we turn the water on. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm sure you can see that I will go through quite a bit of um, emery cloth sandpaper Okay, now we're going to go to the uh, street and cut the water on. And right here, we're back to the, uh, it may not look, at, look like it, but it, we're back actually at the uh, manifold again. And that manifold was attached to this, uh, to an outside faucet. And uh, we're going to put another outside faucet back but we're going to upgrade it uh, make it shiny and new and so what I'm doing now is I'm just uh, making it up at the end because it's really easy right now and all I have to do is just feed it through a little hole okay here's the old galvanized I'm gonna pull that out. Borderline, I mean, um, outside oh, faucet that was here. Right here. So we're gonna pull that out, and we're just gonna. This That's is a old. ten foot length of pipe, so <laughs> it's more than enough. I just don't want to be wasteful. Yeah, we'll pull that out. So by uh, pushing this in there and going in the inside and just getting my measurements from there, uh, it keeps me from uh, using more pipe than I need and wasting. And of course we could use the measuring tape, but uh, this okay. this is a lot faster as you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Do just lift it up. Here. I'll cut it about right here. That should be far enough to okay. just lift it up. Okay, now you can see where I started to, uh, I'm starting to rebuild my, um, manifold. Always, when soldering copper pipe, always start from the bottom and work your way up because heat rises. You can tell that I go through quite a few flux brushes. And usually that happens when I'm working on a renovation or rehab just like this one here. Or doing some type of repair work because in most cases I'm usually in a tight area to work in and sometimes I work with older pipe and I want to make sure it is really clean and the solder is going to take now you notice that I am soldering the ball valve again but this time I'm not worried as much as I was before about burning the uh, inserts because now the uh, system is charged meaning it has water in it. The uh, valve is on the is in the uh, cutoff position. So whenever you see the uh, handle going the opposite way of the pipe, that means the uh, it is cut off. And of course, if it's going the same direction as the pipe, the uh, water is cut on. And 
whenever you're doing vertical like I'm doing here now, always try to uh, push the flux up into the fitting, not away. Don't try to push it away from the fitting, always push it up into the fitting. I um, also have quite a few videos out there that uh, show you how to solder copper pipes. I, I even have one where I completely uh, repiped the house in copper pipe, pulled out all the uh, galvanized pipe and just do it in copper. Uh, it was a little easier. That one was up north where it gets cold and I was working down in the basement so access was a lot easier than here in the south where everything's in the attic. And the uh, reason I am, you know, soldering this in pieces like I am rather than putting a whole, uh, assembling everything together, is that I want to uh, get as much soldering as I've done, I can get done, before I start to uh, deal with the uh, pipe that has a little water in it and creating steam, which is that half inch, it still has a little water in it, and will it will create a little steam. Uh, so I want to save one of those. I want to save, save it down to one of the last fittings, so we get most of them out of the way. So we make sure we have a solid solder connection, rather than fight all of them, just fight one. Notice how. I Take my gloves and I wipe the solder up in it. Yeah, it's a little hotter. That'd be a little faster. Normally, these are not the type of gloves that I would wear to actually solder connections. I would normally wear some uh, brown cotton gloves or use a rag. Notice every connection, every connection. Once I've got the uh, pipes and fittings heated up, I always keep the fire on the fitting itself so that the solder will be sucked up in there. The solder will follow the heat. Okay, here I am at the uh, half inch hot. I'm going to go ahead and get this one out the way because uh, I know there's a little water here and before it gives me any problem and rises any higher I want to do this a little. Mm. Yeah this uh, half inch down here I knew I'd have a little problem with it because of the uh, water that's on the line. But um, it's not going to be too bad because I do have an opening up the top so the steam is uh, able to escape. Just uh, just need to heat this up just a little extra to make sure that the solder gets sucked up in there really good. At least before the water rise any higher. And once I get this on I do want to uh, work on the other parts as fast as I can so that that water doesn't rise up to that and start giving me problems with that one.
the good thing about doing a, a connection like this when all the uh, fittings are right next to each other, it goes a lot faster because once you heat one fitting. Okay, here's the ice maker box. And I'm just uh, soldering a piece on here because I really don't want to solder it in, paste, in place because the flames will be going up and they're going up toward that plastic right there and we don't want that because we don't want to take a chance of melting any of that. Just in case, I'm going to make sure this will, be, this will be a reminder that we need to cut around that, and that's going to go right on top of the drywall once the it's drywall. Where did my record? See the end of that? Turn the sides of everything. Let's go. Whoop, ready to go. Focus. So now I'm just drill a hole down there. Where did my record? See the end of that? Okay, maybe you can't see it real good, but that's a three-quarter inch drill bit. And we're going to run our uh, half-inch copper supply line over to the uh, ice maker. What we're going to do is drill a few holes through the studs so we can just... marks that I put on here previous. Make sure that they're all lined up and the pipes won't be nice and straight. Okay, you can see now we've got it. the studs, we have a nice straight piece of pipe. And this pipe is just a random piece. And again, random meaning it's not a specific size, just long enough so we can cut the two ends to fit exactly to where we need it. And this was a mistake on my part right here. We used the coupling because I brought the box up too high and I didn't want to pull the nails back out. This metal full plus ice maker box. again and I'm Claude Taylor thank you for watching and if you like subscribe and give me a thumbs up thank you